things, but I can reach into the cavity and do that. Also, it allows me to, the, if, if I need to keep it flat, I can cut some big long strips or something, like going through the skin down the, down the backbone or something like that. It's, it's really helpful for that. Um, also, it helps intimidate students. So if you're ever in my <laughs> position, go ahead and purchase one because students are scared of it. Oh, I get it. I got it. it took me a second. No, it's uh, this a knife this size, and I'll be I'll be completely honest with you guys. Uh, a knife this size costs about thirty-five dollars. All right, it's stamped. It's not real expensive. Um, this flexible boning knife I got it on sale for nineteen ninety-five. Online. Just keep your eye open. Um, these are both Victorinox models. Um, Forstner and Victorinox, same company. It's the same company that makes Swiss Army knives. Drexel, De Dexter. Um, okay, so the first thing I typically do is go ahead and try to work some of this jowl off of here. It was frozen at one point. It's not anymore. Uh, so I'm going to go. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and take the head off right behind the ear. Uh, then we'll work some of the jowl off of both sides. We are going to save the head. So. Um, the jowl is the cheek. You're exactly right. And you can see, once I start cutting through here, you can see that, if you could see in here, you can see that there is a lot of connective tissue. And if you're squeamish, um, this is the most, this is the worst part of it, okay? I promise. So I just got through the, got through the backbone there, got through the neck, and um, we're going to just finish this off. This is surprisingly easy, guys. We're just talking about really, and we've got to get these two segments off of both sides, split the thing in half. I mean, really, this is not hard. <laughs> tough, tough to cut, harder to cut through? No, it's not at all. So, who in here? Yeah, the tongue is absolutely edible. Um, We've got some skin on here. Uh, the Italians saved this. Uh, we can make jowl bacon. And if you ever heard jowl bacon, that's where that comes from. The cheeks right here. If you look at the back side, you can see that this section right here where the jowl is, it looks like bacon. Right? It looks like bacon. So you get in here, you get through the skin, come around up underneath the cheek. I mean, it pretty much, these animals, We'll kind of tell you where they want to be cut. So you come around this guy, up into here, you've got jowl right there. The Italians will cure this with uh, cracked black pepper, uh, other spices, and they call it guanciale. You ever heard of guanciale? Absolutely. A headless carcass? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, for roasting? Uh huh. But you do that with the head, right? You can do it either way. Oh, okay. The uh, my family, my well, I should say my wife's family, my in-laws. Yeah, it is now. It's hard for me to. It's just hard sometimes to remember that. <laughs> and I love them. Don't get me wrong. I love them. Uh, my wife's family has a uh, a hog roast every year, and of course you know who has to go cook, who has to go do it now. But anyways, they've been having a hog roast for about 22 years, and they always get a headless pig to roast. So it's just, I mean, somebody's got to take the head off, though. They, I'm saying, like, you buy, they're not going to sell it to you with the head off. You're going to cut it off. No, no, they'll cut it off, but somebody has to cut it off. Right. And if they cut it off, they're going to charge you to cut it off. Right. Uh, but you're also saving yourself, I don't know, 10 pounds, 10, 12 pounds. It's pretty heavy. So work out the cost. I'm going to go ahead and take the ears off. A student came through and already has a... Uh, Put dibs on the ears. Um, these are great for animals, your dogs. You roast them in the oven for a real long time until they turn nice mahogany. Um, you don't really have to do anything to them except for cook them. They dry out. I had a kid work. I 
And then what? Peanut butter. Oh, really? For the dog? That's awesome. So uh, somebody's going to come and pick these up. That's somebody's. Um, we're left with, um, you can see all the meat. It's still on here. This is just like, uh, this is not, just because it's on the head doesn't mean it's gross. It's not. There's a lot of connective tissue in there. There's a lot of fat. This makes a beautiful, beautiful stock. This is something that you do not, if you have it, don't throw it away. Um, part of the... Um, part of the things you have to look out for when you are cooking this, if you're going to use it for stock, is that the eyeballs will cloudy it up. Uh, you don't want to cut so close that uh, you pierce through the uh, skull and the brains come out. The brains will cloud your stock. When we make our, uh, when we make our head cheese, we're going to cook the, the legs and the head together. And then when we strain that off, we're going to clarify it. We're going to consomme it. And then we're going to pour it back on top of the meat. And then it sets up. If you mold it right, it looks like cheese. That's why they call it head cheese. Uh, will we be using the brain? We will not be using the brain. If you like, if you like pig brains, then you can go buy some. We won't be using it. What's that? The eyeball. I just want to pop it out of there. Um... <laughs> Tore it. Oh, I'm tearing this thing up. I'm going to leave it as it is. <laughs> I'm not going to mess it up any more. Poor little guy. Okay, so let's get the head in here. So we've got the jowls, the ears, the head all together. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take off the feet. We're going to use the feet in the head cheese. Okay, so loins. Right back here. Loins run back, right back through here. If we open, turn this on his back and check out the interior here. Belly's right here. If you pull back the belly, you can see the tenderloins. Most four-legged animals, that's where the tenderloins are. All right, and cows, uh, they're typically covered with fat. And it's not as close to the, um, to the organs. But that's where the tenderloins are. So what I typically like to do is go ahead and... Um, before I start cutting this thing in half, before I get too far, I want to get to a place where I can cut the belly out. The belly runs right along the rib cage. You can see the rib cage right through here and feel it. I want to take the belly out on both sides. Then I want to go ahead and take the tenderloins out so when I start sawing the sucker in half, I don't cut the tenderloins up. You don't want to tear it up. So, belly all the way down through here. That's exactly what you do. This is actually a nice big chunk of belly. You don't really. Okay. Belly. That's bacon. 